Angie. Today I'm going to do something a little different, still with the clay, but using acrylic paints. Now I'm just using a piece of scrap clay because you're not going to see it anyway because it will be covered up. And I'm going to use, be using folk art, silver, metallic blue topaz, and a metallic blue sapphire, and white. So you're going to need to shake these up so that they're really good mixed up. And it's going to be like a pour on clay. So, and I'm, but I'm not mixing it with um, a flow trawl or anything like that. I'm just using the paint itself. So there's no diluting it or anything. So I'm going to start with the blue sapphire. And all I'm going to do is just put a drop in the middle, anywhere you choose to put it. And I'll do a silver. Just a drop. And then I'll move on to the blue topaz. <clears throat> white, which is deco art, yeah, like I say, just a drop in the middle, and I'm going to repeat it until I think I'm going to have enough paint to cover my polymer clay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just keep putting a drop in the middle. And try not to forget where you stopped, like I just did. That's probably enough. Yeah, because I'm going to be blowing it around now. If it's not, I can always add more. It's not a huge deal. Now I have this straw, just a plastic straw that I use, and I'm just gonna blow it. Like so. I'm gonna pick it up and move it, because I don't have it on anything that I can get my head around it. That's okay. Now I'm going to blow it the other way. Turn it again. Get paint everywhere. And after I blow it, I'm going to use my heat gun because I want to make sure there's no air bubbles in it. I'll just clean this up a little bit before I lay it in it. And I'm good at getting pink all over myself. <clears throat> like that. But before I do the heat gun, I want to pick it up and clean up under it. Less mess. For me, the less I get all over me. This is just water. sticking on there. There. And I'll bring that back over. And I'll put the heat gun on it for just a little bit. It's 
will also help it dry some, and I'm just, I just have this on low. There we go. And then I'm just gonna let that dry. And when it's dry, I'll be back. All right, I'm back, and it's dry. <clears throat> and I actually threw this one together as well. Um, using gold in here, but still white, one of the same blues, a different blue, darker blue where I used the um, topaz or whatever that one was called in this one. And I think, did I say gold? Anyway, it's gold. I done it for a different reason, but yeah, anyway, I'll do something else with it. Well, I'll show you, because I've already done this and I've made this. And I was going to do some beads like this for it. And then I thought, well, let me see what I've made for beads, because I've made so many. So anyway, I thought, well, that just matches pretty good. Pretty much the same as this, but I think the dark blue that I put in here, I didn't put in here, and I thought I had. But anyway, that, that's this one. I did. Mm, it's kind of cool. They're neat. They're fun. So with this one, I thought I can even have enough room to do it with this one as well if I want. I'm just gonna take a piece out of here that I like, but I wanna do a whole circle of black and try and get it on there, center it. So, and I think I'm gonna do the same with this one since I do have enough and it's just a matter of picking a spot. Well, this one here, I don't have much of a choice because it just kind of fits, but I'd like to get a little of that gold in there as well. And I'm thinking I should probably do it from behind I did this one, whoops, doing it the front way, but it is it is paint and it doesn't cut so easy. Like this way I can just run my finger over it like that and it's gonna give a nice cut. And with the plastic cutters, it doesn't cut like metal cutter cutters would. And even so, it doesn't matter because I think you'd still have to do it this way. And then just punch it out. Like so, and yeah, I've got paint and glue and everything else stuck to me. But there's that one. And now we'll go ahead and do this one. And I'll try doing this one front ways and see what the difference will be. I don't think it's gonna be a huge difference, but. Okay, that's just, where am I going to cut this one? It's very pretty. I like it down here, right there. Now let's see how well this one cuts. So you can see it almost um, rounds it, like gives it that nice dome to it. But this is the problem when you go to lift it up, you see? So you gotta be careful when, you, when you're using the acrylic paints. Now some paints might be different than others, I don't know. Just give it a twist and a turn and just be gentle with it. And it'll be fine. And once you bake it, and then you put your resin on top like that one, it's not going anywhere. Just smooth off the edges. So maybe it is better to do it from the front. It pushes it down like so. I must have sensitive fingers. I feel that it kind of pains me to do that. just the way I treat them. Kind of rough on them. There. All right, so I forgot to take my black out and roll it out. So you know what? I'm going to do that and then I'll be back again. Okay, I'm back. So I did try and put this one together. Hope that sun, sun, I hope that the light isn't shining on there so you can see it. I need to put a little hole in it. 
had little struggles with it because my eyes aren't that great, I guess. Anyway, I'll fix it up a little bit after. So now we're going to do this one. And what I'm going to, I just want to practice with that one, see what I was going to do. So I'll, I'll do it with this. So I'm going to put a hole in the middle using the cutter that I used before. These are um, Samantha Burrell's cutters. What else am I using of hers? Oh, mica powder for hers that I ordered from her. Anyway, so we'll put a circle in there, and then we'll pull that out. And I tend to call her by her name, but her design thing is Jessamay Tutorials, Jessamay's Designs. In case I forget to say that. Anyway, and now we'll stick this in here. I would have used this, but this one here, I thought they were the same size, but it's just a little tiny bit bigger than this. So that's okay. Anyway, so we'll do that. The only thing is I'm going to have to take this and center it by my eyes. Let's see if I can do that. And I'm going to have to do this off camera here because... I'm thinking that's pretty close. It's gonna have to be. Because here we go. I'm cutting it. Oh, what do you guys think? Does it look all right? Well, it doesn't look too bad for a blind woman. I'm not blind, <laughs> I'm just, I'm kind of exaggerating, but I just find when it comes to little details with these things, I find it really hard. And I feel like I'm just really straining my eyes. Maybe it's just time for an upgrade of glasses. But yeah, that looks all right. And I'm getting clay everywhere. I also rolled out some silver. So what I'm gonna do is get a slice of silver and I'll do it like my other one. So always make sure your blade's clean. I'm going to trim things up here a little bit. And I don't want it real wide. I don't want to go thinner than the other one. Okay, that's probably good. I'm bring this back. Just lay it down around here. And I will gently and carefully that right around. I've already had practice with one, so this one should go much better. Hopefully. Slowly all around. And I will have to touch up some spots like that. That's okay. Where's my little knife? I just had it. Right here. I should say my little blade. It's not really a knife. I guess it is kind of, but you know. Let's chop that off. Line it all up nice and neat. Just like so. Yeah, this one went on a lot better than the other. I think the other one I had too thick. I should have thinned it out a little bit more. Made this here thin, more thin. Just try and get rid of our lines. Seams. Best we can. I like these little rubber tip things. They're, they work well. And I'm also going to put mica powder on here too. Like they say, don't play with it too much because then you just end up making a mess of it, right? Guess what Angie tends to do? Play with it too much. That should be all right. My fingerprints. There, mica powder. And I find the easiest way to do it is with an eye brush. 
the top. I'll use what's in the cover first. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's enough, see? And we don't need a whole lot. Just gives it that little bling. And after these are baked, I'm gonna fill them up with resin. I'll probably do the two-part resin because it's gonna take a little bit. I like saving my UV resin for other days. I don't need a whole lot, but you know. There. Whoops. And if you do accidentally, like I just did, get it on there. All I gotta do is take a wet tissue or a baby wipe and just wipe it off. Get your finger in there. <clears throat> uh. Yeah, my allergies are driving me insane. Every morning it's the same thing. Throughout the day it's the same thing. It's been a rough year for allergies. There, now let's put a little put a cover on this first. I'm not good with this stuff. Oh, excuse me. This these come in a package. Let me find my package. And yes, I did get them from Jessamay Design. Jessamay, Jessamay, whatever tools. Micromix. They make nice little holes, though, for your cabochons. I was so hoping that that would pop out, but no. And again, I don't see so great when it comes to these little things. Let's see if I can get this one out better than I did the other one. Oh, I'll let that one popped right out. You know, we wouldn't. All right, well, there. I'm going to bake these for an hour. Make sure my sides and everything are nice and clean. Bake them for an hour. Primo's recommended temperature, which is 275 in the oven. And I'll be back, and we'll do our resin. And then string it or something. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> and no, I didn't get it in the oven yet. <laughs> I'm playing around. I thought, I need texture on that. So I did this one with the texture and I just put some circle there in there. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, but I thought I gotta show you. That wouldn't be very fun now, would it? If I didn't show you what I did. So I just took my texture stamp that I made and I just carefully went around the edges because I really should have done this beforehand. And I just tapped it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I just check it, and then if I want to go over it again, I would. I just think it really looks so much better. A little bit of texture on it. And then I took my circle. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't out of whack. And I just kind of tucked everything. I hope my head's not getting in the way. Tucked everything back in until my cutter would fit in there nicely. I didn't want to lose the shape. There, like that. There. And then all I did was take the end of this, which I could have used my ball tool, or but I didn't. I took it the end of this and I just went around like so. All the way around. Now this one here is more thin than the other one, so I really have to be careful on this one. And I just find it makes it look a much, much better. That's so plain, gives it more of a, more life, if you want to call it that. There. Don't you think? Looks better. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. All right, now I will put these in the oven. Bake them for an hour. And I'll be back. All right, they're out of the oven. And very hot. And flexible. Now, before I put, see, I forgot, I need to do the box. So before we do any resin, I'm gonna roll out some black clay. And we'll put wax on them. So that they'll look much prettier than what they do right at this moment. Right now they're looking pretty icky. And I also want to put a texture on it. And I'll use the same one that I did in the front. So, here we go. Push that down. Like so. up I don't know if I'll be able to get them both on there no I'm not so I'm going to put a little of my bakeable medium my liquid sculpey on it Not way too much, but that's okay, so I can put some on the other one. She don't need much of this at all. Just enough so it'll stick. So I know I had a wipe here. <clears throat> Just take my blade, trim around it. I'm gonna see if I can use that. Um, yeah, I've still got it here too. My circle there to uh, poke through the hole. No, I don't think so. It's like it shrunk on me. There, I'll pick that up. And trim around the edges. I also want to try and get these edges nice and smooth. <clears throat> As I possibly can so I don't have to uh, worry about doing anything with them afterwards. So just give them a little pinch. And that should blend everything in. And if we need to put some more texture on the back after, well, that's fine too. This will make it nice and smooth. It'll give it a nice finish on the side. And save a bake. Now, clean up my mess. I'm just gonna take my Texture stamp and give it another little, just a light push on the back. Oh, my hands are a mess between clay, glue, paint. I have it all over me. But that's what it's like when you're crafting. Just lightly peel that up and look, you get a nice back on it. Nice back and is that an air bubble? Yeah, and a nice air bubble. Oh, 
right there, I can feel it. There, air bubble gone. We don't like those little critters, do we? I'm just gonna go over the edges again with a little wipe. Especially right there, I had to open it up. And then this will go back in the oven, probably just another yeah, 40 minutes or so. I already have one bake, so for an hour. I might put it in for an hour. Won't hurt it. There, now I'll do the same thing to the other one. I gotta make my hole in here too. Or maybe if I use a smaller one, size down from that one. I guess that would be my gray. Whoops, one stuck in my fingers. Yeah, that one fits in there really nice. Now with this, I'm gonna push that right through and pull it right out. There's my cute little hole. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one here, the same thing. And when they come out of the oven, I'll be back. And you'll see the results. Okay, these are out of the oven. I did give them a quick little sanding. This one still did come out much better. And all I used was my polishing cloths that I purchased from um, Jessamy Designs. And they come in their different grits, which I had it here. And now I don't. But anyway, they go up to, I think, 2,000 or something, maybe. I don't know. Let's start at 400. But they're nice. I really like them. They buff up. Here it is here. Yeah, start at 400 and go up to 8,000. That was way off. Anyway, so I did do that. And I did put some Renaissance wax on this one, as you can see the difference. So now I want to... I decided I am going to put some UV resin in there. So I'm going to use this one because it's almost empty and I would really like to uh, finish it off. So I can get on to my newer stuff. So this is what I'll put in here. You can see how it makes a big difference right away in the color of it. I do see some bubbles. I'll get rid of them. And it filled up pretty good. I'll just put that on that one for now. around. Now it's going to take a little bit for this to dry be just because it is quite thick. I just want to make sure I get it all to the edges. It's definitely not going to fall out because I have that rim around there holding all the resin in. I just want to make sure it's right up close and tight. Now, I might as well just use my heat gun. I have it right here. Get those bubbles out of there. I have to pull some of them up a little bit. There, they're quite a ways. And they will rise after a fashion. I'm not sure what that fashion is, but they, they will come up eventually. Doesn't usually take too long. Sometimes I like to encourage it. As you can see, it's gone up the side here. I might as well push it all up there then.
I'll let it set here for a little bit. We'll put resin in the other one while we're letting this set. We're letting it, um, the bubbles come to the top. Nothing worse than bubbles. <coughs> I'll fill this one up too. Steady. I think there's more in this bottle than I realized. This is still coming out. There. <clears throat> Get this one a little push to the edges. I have a feeling that's going to end up on the gold, so I'm just going to do it now. Put it up over the gold. Plus it will help with the um, mica powders. That I almost forgot about when I was sanding. And I also want to make sure there's no um, bubbles inside those little holes that I put in there. So I just poke them as I go along. Just like so. And these ones are gonna take some larger jump rings unless I come up with something else while I'm letting the resin dry under the UV light. Done with this. Just poke inside each little hole. Whoops. Okay. Let that dry. And once I get all the bubbles out, I'm going to put it under the uh, UV light, and then we'll come back and we'll get it. We'll finish it up with the findings. I'm back. Okay. Put this on my silver one and this one here I'm not sure if I'm probably gonna have to make something for this so I can't see that jump ring fitting but hey let's give it a roll I don't have a lot of gold stuff because it's not one of my favorite colors like so a little bit more it might fit on there yeah, I'm definitely a silver fan. I got it in there, but now I'm not going to be able to close it. Maybe if I wasn't all thumbs. Squeeze that together. If not, I'll have to just make one that will fit. I think this will work. I was doubtful, but now I'm seeing clearly now, and it's looking like it's going to work. And it did.
I could put a gold chain on this. Again, I'm not a big fan of it. One of these things with, with this is I only have them in silver. And I will have to add on a couple more gel bricks. I gotta put my Renaissance on this one. I didn't put it on this one. And again, all you do is just rub some on. I'm getting it really good because you know we have some little cracks and stuff going on there from our texture. On the sides. And then on the front black. I should have probably did this before I did the resin, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. The resin's on. There. And then what we do is we buff, buff, buff with this. Just like so. And that'll put a coating on it too to protect it. It's not a 100% necessity thing that you have to do, but it does buff it up some and gives it a nice little finish on there. So I'll open this. I don't even know if I can fit that chain in there. I might have to put something different on. Oh, I guess I can. I think I've tried it before and I did, but I don't know. I forget things. And we'll just pinch that closed. Like so. There you have it. There's this one. Sometimes I find these uh, lobster claw things stick. Usually play with them a little bit. So there's that one. Now this one here, I'm gonna need a couple more jump rings. And I wanna put the open part tucked away. Whoops, right there. I'm gonna get a couple more jump rings. large ones. Well, I'll use a small large. I'll just put this on for now, but I'll have to do something different later on. I'm going forward a little bit. So you can see me struggling. Well, see? I'm a little struggler. I'm gonna stick that little one in there and then close it up. It's gotta be because I'm filming, maybe? I don't know. But I'm having a rough time. I lost my little one, so now I gotta eat another little one. this again. Maybe we'll have better luck this time. Let's open a little bit. There we go. That through there. This through here. I'm going to grab this. And we'll close it. See how easy it can be? <laughs> oh, when things are going right. Can't have everything easy now, can we? I'm just going to do it this way instead of taking a chance and seeing if it'll fit or not. Oh. 
Yeah. Just like that. And there they are. We'll pretend this is gold. And there they are. Very easy, very simple. And like I say, all it was was it was sort of like a acrylic pour on some polymer clay. Blow it around a little bit. But I mean, this is just something simple you can do with it. You, I mean, the, it's endless as to what you can actually do with this. The colors and I mean, I just did kind of blue colors, one gold, one silver, with a little bit of white. I mean, you can do multiple colors. Um, you can add like red or purple or pinks and greens and yellows. Like it's just unlimited to what you can do. Oh, I just wanted to show you something simple. Show you how easy it is done. If you want to try, it, give it a whirl. And uh, yeah, it's it's really fun, and it doesn't take long for the acrylic paint to dry, which makes it even more fun because if you're not patient like me when it comes to doing these things, and you want to get them done right away, yeah, it's awesome. It's great. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Stay safe, and goodbye.